um, well, it's good to see you here in my office. Um, and sorry, it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> yes, and there's room for you right here. <laughs> I do apologize. It's just that I'm in the throes of a fascinating research project and... Oh, gosh. Well, it's taking a while. <laughs> you see, I am investigating the practices of standard oil. It's a bold project. I mean, even my father said, Don't do it, Ida. You'll ruin the magazine. At the time, of course, I was working for McClure's magazine in New York City. Not my comfortable Connecticut office you join me in here today. Ah, oh, goodness, and I suppose he was right. I mean, from the very beginning, there was a persistent fog of doubt and suspicion surrounding my practice of research. I mean, Standard Oil has been under investigation from several lawmaking bodies and law-abiding bodies, might I add, uh, for their exploitation of workers and for their, uh, their restriction of free trade, any number of things. But any time I went to go and understand the documents surrounding these investigations, someone would say, Oh, you'll never find them. They've all been destroyed. Oh, goodness me. What was that? A chill runs through my bones. A, whew, a stench of wealth pervades my nostrils. Could it have been none other than ah! John Rockefeller? What? No, I'm not John Rockefeller. I'm uh, Ron Jockefeller. No, many here. Big sports guy. See? Oh, really? Uh, a big sports guy, huh? Yeah, yeah, my tournament, just on my way to my tournament. Well, I certainly hope you get there. I mean, I hear that the railroads are going under. What? Who told you that? Oh my gosh, please, 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 please tell me who told you. That's not public information yet. Oh, get up. Get a grip of yourself, boy. I mean, here, why don't you sit on this little pedestal that will make you more comfortable. Okay, that's better. And I tell you what, I'll give you three guesses in order to tell me what I already know. Uh, who told you? Who told you? Was it a uh, God? What? No. Why? Why would it be God? Well, God has given me ruling power over the working class and uh, the right to hoard more wealth than anyone of this era. No, God, I shudder to think. Uh, no, um, hey, take another guess. You love second chances. Who is it? Oh, Henry H. Rogers. That guy will tell anybody anything as long as he can bet on it. What a snitch. What a gambler. Uh, Henry, uh, Henry H. Rogers, you say? Um, uh, do you have any contact information for him? Perhaps his uh, LinkedIn address? What? No! Oh, my watch. My gold watch is getting so heavy. Oh, I have to go home now. Bye. What? You come back here! Oh! He's always shirking his responsibilities, isn't he? Hmm. Well, what he doesn't know is, of course, I already interviewed Henry Rogers. I'm no fool. I mean, <laughs> let me tell you about it. It was a while ago, but I have a pretty good memory of how it went down. Mr. Rogers, thank you so much for meeting me here today. Oh, it's my honor. What did you say your name was again, dear girl? At uh, Ida Tarbell. Oh, yes, Tarbell's tank shops. Goodness, yes. I, I could put my finger on the map where your father's shop stood. Yes, good, good days. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm so happy you remember. 
Oh, goodness. Excuse me. I do tend to get a bit out of my element here. Oh, no problem, young thing. It's so nice to see a, a smart whippersnapper like yourself taking an interest in Standard Oil. Now tell me, how did your interest in Standard Oil begin? Oh, um, well, <laughs> it was here, in my hometown, on the flats, hills, and, well, my favorite finicky mountains of Roseville. Oh, yes! <laughs> Oh, and I do remember your home. A beautiful, white, peaked Victorian roof. Oh, how lovely. <laughs> and I think we didn't even own it. You didn't? What do you mean? Well, <laughs> we rented it from Rockefeller. You see, and uh, every cent that we saved, I put directly into stocks. Ah! What a gamble. How could you justify the cost? How could you trust Rockefeller? Well, I have always been a bit of a gambler, you see. Uh, when the markets are closed, the stock markets are closed, what I do is I have a little gamble, a little poker game, in my own home. Ha! Huh. Speaking of which, uh, have you seen my watch? Have you seen a... Well, just keep an eye out. I, I can never keep track. Of your watch? No, dear, of time, of my winnings. Win, lose, time just keeps moving. I see. Lovely, lovely. Um, I, I can see that you're a gambling man. I, I remember uh, one day the schools were closed because all my teachers were out in that stock market of yours. <laughs> I asked my father if maybe I could take a chance, maybe I could try my hand. I never received so stern a lecture. No daughter of mine! Oh, etc., etc. <laughs> I never did see your father at any of my poker games. No, sir. <laughs> Goodness. Now, um, tell me, uh, you're writing a book, and uh, on what are you basing your uh, research? Purely on documents. I know this might put you in a bit of an odd position, Mr. Rogers, because you work for Mr. Rockefeller, but <sighs> I need those documents. Even you as a first-person resource would be helpful. I don't expect you to change the policy, but... Uh, uh, standards have changed what? Uh, st changed somewhat at Standard Oil, you see. Uh, we are releasing documents to certain citizens here and there. I see. Oh, my goodness. I mean... <clears throat> do tell. Well, um, you see, uh, <laughs> very interesting, actually. Uh, well, you know about the railroads, but do you know about the pipelines? No! I mean, hmm, do tell. Well, uh, that's where Rockefeller really got himself into trouble, really boxed himself into a corner, you see. When you own every aspect of production, it becomes difficult to have anyone else to blame. Because, uh, well, <laughs> all blame has to fall on you. The customers didn't know that, of course, but, uh, what can you do? They're so small anyway. I see. Mr. Rogers, I guess that leads me to a question. Oh, what's that, dear? Well, goodness, you own stock in, in Mr. Rockefeller's company. Uh, yes, of course. And you were kind of powerful. Uh, not powerful enough to move those mountains like you do, girl. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, why didn't you stop it? Why didn't you say anything? Why didn't you stop the exploitation of workers, the restriction of free trade? Uh, you see, this is Standard Oil's obsession. We cannot let any company, no matter how small, overtake us. Anyone could become large who was once small, just like we did. And we can't run the risk. That's a gamble I'm not willing to take. I understand. I tell you what, girl, why, why don't you come to my office sometime? I'll, uh, I'll tell you some things. You would be willing to meet again? On conditions, uh, you tell me what you know and I'll tell you what I know. Oh, Mr. Rogers, I must be clear here. 
my book, my story, my research cannot be dictated by the rights of Standard Oil. It must be my own process. My opinion must be something I can stand by at the end of this process. I might be wrong, made wrong eventually, but this is the time to tell the truth. <laughs> you young people. Oh, well, keep an eye out for my watch. Huh? I'll, I'll see you in my office sometime. Just uh, let my secretary know. Oh my goodness. And while I'm out here moving mountains, climb this mountain I did. <laughs> It was no problem. I just kept asking the questions. I kept not being afraid. I kept swallowing my fear in order to interview all the people that I could in order to gain all the information that I could. I just, well, I just kept climbing. This is a special day indeed. My book, ha, to be published. <laughs> Can you believe it? I just hope it helps someone. And of course, here my portrait stands in the walls of the Supreme Court. It did help. In fact, it was used in the Supreme Court case to, as evidence, to show evidence against Standard Oil for their mistreatment of workers and for their uh, restriction of free trade, for their horizontally integrated monopoly. And now, on the walls of the Supreme Court, I see hundreds of young reporters willing to move mountains. <laughs> Does my heart good.